Hey guys, what's up? My name's Ines. I write kissing books and today I am having a bit of a breakdown because there's not three bases in the game of intimacy. There's 12. Want me to show you how to hit a home run? Let's break it down. So in the last episode, we talked about pacing out your sex scenes with growth, regroup, and setback to make those scenes more integral to your plot. Otherwise, it just becomes description that readers can, and sometimes will, gloss over. There's a pace to the levels of intimacy. You can't just go from your hero seeing you to just jumping his bones. Did I just hear a dark romance writer say, hold my beer? Hold on to your mug, girl. There's a science to sex. Yes, a science to it. Let's talk about the 12 stages of intimacy put forth by scientist Desmond Morris in his book, Intimate Behaviors. I came in contact with Desmond Morris through documentaries in my work in television. And in television and film, we're taught to view the world through the camera lens. And there's three basic shots of all camera work. It starts with a close-up, which is a close-up of your face, pretty much what you're seeing of me right now if you're watching on YouTube. Looking at another human's face shows you their emotions, but it's not always enough information. The second shot, which is the most often used shot, is called the medium shot. The medium shot gives you a clear view of the person's face, but also gives you a view of their torso because a lot of people, and again, if you're watching me on YouTube, you see that I talk with my hands like a lot of people do. So that gives you more information about that person. And then the third shot is called the long shot. The long shot includes a full body shot, but it also gives you a bit of the background because location can become very important. It's disorienting when you go from a long shot with the full person and a bit of the background to a straight close up where you're right up in the person's face. When something like that happens on camera, you flinch. The same happens in reverse. If you go from a close-up shot of someone's face all the way to the long shot, it's going to be a bit disorienting. We'll blink and we'll need some time to readjust to the more information that you just gave us. We're taught in television and in film to move from close-up to medium shot to long shot and vice versa. Long shot, medium shot to close-up to allow for a smooth transition that doesn't jerk our audience out of the, the, the visual trance that we're trying to put you in if you're watching a television show or a film. The same thing should happen with the emotional sense of physical intimacy, which is why I love to use the 12 levels of physical intimacy from Intimate Behavior by Desmond Morris. In level one, your hero and heroine become aware of each other. Either one becomes aware of one or they both become aware of the other. They may have just entered the room or entered the scene and they're checking them out. Either they're checking each other out or one person is checking the other person out. They start to notice if that person is their sexual preference in gender and height in hair color and eye color and skin color because some of us like pale porcelain and some of us like a golden tan and then others of us like that rich color of midnight. So the hero heroine is checking for their preferences there. The second level is eye to eye. That's an acknowledgement to each other of that awareness. And that's a lot of times when the connection just starts to form. Oftentimes in paranormal romance, a werewolf or a vampire might scent that other person and know that that's the one for them. The third level of intimacy is verbal contact. Your hero and heroine have a conversation and that starts the emotional bonding that when they start to learn about each other as people or, you know, as aliens or as werewolves or <laughs> fae, you know how we do in romance. The fourth level of intimacy is hand to hand. There is a lost art to hand holding, but you see it a lot of times in Regency romances, especially those old Harlequins that were super thin. There's a, in paranormal romance, there's often a spark at that first touch where the hero is certain that this is the one for them. The fifth level of intimacy is hand or arm to shoulder. It's the yield yawn and stretch your arms around and hug her in the movie theater move. It's an acknowledgement of possession to let other people know of your deepening relationship. The sixth level of intimacy is hand or arm to waist and that the hand is moving a little bit lower than the shoulder and that possession and you're getting a little bit warmer to the spot that you really want to be at in intimacy, which is surprising that level seven is mouth to mouth. We move back up. 
we go back up to the face before we start going lower to that 12th level where the genitals are because you have to fall in love with the whole person. But really, it's because consent is sexy. And having those words spoken is a surefire way to assure you've gotten consent. The eighth level of intimacy is hand to head because the head and the heart need to come first in a romance. One night stand is not true love. Now I'm here an erotic romance novelist telling me to hold their beer. <laughs> the ninth level of intimacy is hand to body. And we're getting warmer, guys, because the 10th level of intimacy is mouth to body or mouth to breast. We're actually at first base now. And we're here in Desmond Morris's uh, levels. We're at step 10 when we get to first base. Second base, hand to genitals or touching below the waist, is at part number 11. And then the home run, genitals to genitals, is at level 12. Maybe. There's lots of ways for genitals to touch without intercourse, which starts a whole other level of intimacy. Now that you know the 12 stages, and there is a handout on my website at anestrites.com forward slash breakdown. Now that you know them, let's see them in context. And we're going to go back to our quintessential text, the film Fifty Shades of Grey. So, in the film Fifty Shades of Grey, the main characters first have eye-to-body awareness when Anna trips coming into Christian's office. When he comes to rescue her, they have eye-to-eye -eye contact, and you can see that both catch their breath in the film. In a book, romance authors excel at this first meeting when it's gaze-to-gaze. -gaze. We even take it a step further. We notice their eye color, we notice their hair color, and of course, we remark on their smell because we are weird like that. The meet cue to Fifty Shades of Grey is a conversational interview verbal where Anna interviews Christian for the college paper. The questions become more personal and deeper as their interest in each other grows based on their eye gazing and their answers. Coming to the fourth level, Christian already held her hand when he helped Anna back up after she tripped coming into his office, and he holds her hand again when he shakes it on their departure. Now, in a romance novel, that first touch usually ignites sparks, whether it's a sweet romance, or it's a paranormal romance, or it's a steamy historical. Something passes through the characters to tell the reader that these two are meant to be, and readers love this. You can never do this too much. After that first touch, Things can speed up or they can slow down, but these levels are not a one-way street. You can always circle back around, especially if your characters have to regroup or if they have a setback after some type of an obstacle. If you watch the film, Christian constantly goes back to level eight, where he cups Anna's face with his hands. You see it after their coffee date when he's trying to let her go, you see it again in the hotel room the night after he snatches her from her outing with her friends from college and she vomits on his shoes. Their first kiss is in an elevator when he says, F the paperwork, and he grabs her face and he goes for it with their first kiss. After he spanks her for the first time, he ends with his hands on her face and a kiss. The first time in his playroom, he's holding her hand and after he explains to her what this room is all about, he ends it with the kiss while he's holding her face. They come back to hand in hand or hand in face again and again. It becomes the medium shot for a romance novel. Even in this erotic romance about sexual discovery, step eight, that hand to face is the bread and the butter of the emotions. It's used to ground this couple back in the emotion, back in their connection, before, during, and even after the sex scenes. So my recommendation, the same way that a camera operator moves from close up to medium shot to long shot and vice versa, is that you do the same thing as you go into and come out of your love scenes to keep your readers emotionally connected along with your characters. If you need to draw attention to an emotional record scratch, then break the rules, but do it for a good reason. And then later get back on track with a smooth ride up and down those 12 levels of intimacy. This works just as well for sweet romance as it does for steamy romance, except for with sweet romance, 
The elevator stops at the eighth floor <laughs> of hands ahead and we don't go any lower. Did you enjoy these talks on the levels of intimacy? Well, I've got more coming for you. You can find out more about my new courses, Writing Dirty at AnessWrites.com forward slash Writing Dirty and Writing Sweet at AnessWrites.com forward slash Writing Sweet because I write both. Want a more in-depth exploration of pacing? Try out my course, Pace Turner Pacing, How to Write a Binge-Worthy Novel in 21 Days at at AnessWrites.com forward slash PTP for Pace Turner Pacing. In the meantime, you guys, you know what to do. You, you go and you get them words and me. I'll try to keep it together until the next time that we break it down. Have a great one, guys. Bye.